Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari 8Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Wizard, which was an unreleased prototype developed by Chris Crawford. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Today's game is Wizard, which was an unreleased prototype developed by Chris Crawford in 1980. Um, it was originally intended to be the last of the Atari 2600 games that came on a cartridge with 2K of uh, memory. And uh, according to Crawford, Wizard was designed as a 2K game, but then the marketing people came knocking and decided that everything on the Atari 2600 should now be 4K to make it look more exciting. So they asked him to expand the game. Um, but Crawford refused because, one, he was a bit tired of working on the Atari 2600 and was more enthusiastic and passionate about working on the Atari 8-bit line of computers, uh, which he would go on to do with great success, uh, as we've seen on the Atari 8Z series. Um, and also, converting Wizard from a 2K to a 4K game would have involved completely redesigning it from the ground up, and he didn't really want to do that, so, um, yeah, he said no, and marketing lost interest. So, Wizard languished in obscurity for a number of years as a result. Uh, it didn't have a part number, it wasn't, didn't appear in any Atari catalogues or anything like that, so it was mostly forgotten until it's resurfacing in more recent years thanks to compilations like this. Uh, it also appears on one of the Atari collection cartridges for the Evercade, so it's a little bit more well known now, and it is a complete game, um, but it, it, it just never released back in the day. So. Uh, with that in mind, there's probably not much in the way of documentation for it, but let's have a look anyway. You're the most powerful wizard in ancient Irata, which is Atari backwards, don't you know, as anyone who's ever played Mule will know. Uh, but an important source of your power has been stolen. The magical, eternal flame of strength has been taken by the evil wizard Santolini and hoarded deep in his catacombs. Hoarded spelt incorrectly. Protected by his evil imps Niaskanuj, the catacombs will prove a challenge even for a great wizard like yourself. It's hunting time. Both you and the imps have damage points and keep track of how good your health is, denoted by the counters at the far right and left of screen respectively. Get hit by an imp's magical bolt or touch by an imp and your damage goes up by two points. Hit an imp with your own magical bolt and their damage goes up by two. If your counter goes up to 100, it's game over. If the imp's counter goes up to 100, it's curtains for them. However, the flame seems to have a mind of its own and goes deeper into the catacombs after each confrontation, so it's onward to a deeper and much harder level of the catacomb and deadlier imp for you. The imps themselves are invisible until they can get close enough to attack you. As if that wasn't enough, they can travel through the walls of the catacombs but not shoot through them. They start the game with 60 damage points, but start with progressively lower points each level of the catacomb you go down. Every time you shoot, you must take time to recharge your energy, denoted by the dimming of your character. Likewise, every time you hit an imp, you must take time to recover, giving you time to flee or reposition yourself. Each time you kill an imp, your kill counter next to the imp's damage point counter will go up by one and your damage points will go down significantly. Wizard comes with a single player and two player competitive mode that can be selected by pressing your game select switch. In the two player feature, one player will control the wizard while the other player controls the imp. To add to the challenge for the second player and level the playing field, since they can move through walls, they are invisible until in range of the wizard. Um, so you can also use the difficulty switches. Uh, if you, you set the left difficulty switch to A for advanced, then your wizard has the added task of defending the eternal flame of strength. If the imp touches the eternal flame, your wizard will slow down as his source of power has been captured and turned against him. On the easy setting, the eternal flame is invulnerable to the imp and doesn't have any effect on the game. And that is it. So, let's have a go. Right, let's just reset that. One player. And off we go. So, I'm the wizard. He's a little shuffling dude. Up at the top, there's the imp. And down here, this is the eternal flame of strength. Uh, but we're playing on easy mode at the minute, so that doesn't really matter at the moment. So all we're trying to do is get the imp's health, or damage rather, up to 100. And his his damage is the number on the left, which currently says 74. And beautiful, beautiful purple on blue text. He's now up to 75. And you see that when you're out of when you're out of range of the imp, you can't see him anymore. He just disappears. 
but you can get a feel for roughly where he is from the, uh, the sort of heartbeat sound that's going in the background there. Because it's fainter the further away you are. And as we can see, he also seems to have a bit of a tendency to get stuck in this middle bit here. But he's also quite good at shooting you, as you can see. He, he has no such restrictions on firing as you do. And you'll also notice that I'm now moving a lot slower. Because I'm in a, a weakened state. Right, we've taken an imp down, though. So that should heal us a bit. Yeah, that takes us down to eight points of damage. So that is a significant amount. And the new imp... Um, has 56 points of damage to start with and again we just have to take him up to 100 and so he starts in a different position this time and again we need to alternate between shooting him and taking cover to recharge because as you can see he can fire continuously and also isn't subject to sort of eight directional movement controls as we are. You also seem to be recharging a lot quicker when we're in proximity to the flame, which is neat. All right, this is going pretty well. Oh no, stop that. So this is a very simple game, but it's actually quite effective. I haven't spent a lot of time with it before because I, to be honest, I didn't really rate it all that much, but actually sort of making myself sit down and play it now, I can see that there's a lot of interesting potential with this. And I can see this being great fun in two player. The challenge factor for two-player is interesting because um, while the second player is moving around the maze, they are invisible, so they can't see where they are either. <laughs> so it takes on this interesting sort of Scotland Yard-like approach where it's as much about figuring out where you are as it is... Oh, stop that. It's as much about figuring out where you are as it is... Uh, getting into a position where you can attack the other player. Oh, stop, 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 stop it. Oh, he's relentless. He's relentless. Get away from him. Yeah, you do definitely seem to recharge more quickly when you're near the flame, which is something it doesn't mention in the manual. It says that the flame has no effect on gameplay in the easy mode, but it still seems to... be relevant from that perspective actually you know what there is auto aim in this because if you, if you just press the fire button oh i'm gonna die there we go if you just press the fire button it fires a shot directly at the imp so that allows you to fire in more than eight directions that's interesting that's very interesting, actually. All right, let's bump on the left difficulty switch. So now we have to protect the flame as well. So if the imp grabs the flame, uh, then we are in trouble. And we have to go and reclaim it. All right, he's down here somewhere, so... Oh, interesting. So you could also use... You could also use the direction of your shots to help track down where the imp is. Because if I just stand here and fire... It fires towards the imp. So I can actually use that to figure out where he is, even if I can't see him. Very interesting. I should have expected nothing less from Chris Crawford. It's 
Chris Crawford is the absolute master of making interesting mechanics on very limited hardware. Um, so if you watch the Atari A to Z series, you may recall some time ago we looked at a game he made called Gossip. Uh, which is a game about conversation. And social modelling. And it's a fascinating game, and it's exactly the sort of thing you'd expect Chris Crawford to make. And he also pioneered a lot of things about strategy games. And that sort of thing. So all the interesting mechanics here in Wizard... Yeah. Good stuff. So on paper, on paper, this is a really simplistic con- Stop it, you're gonna kill me. Stop it, stop it. Yeah, on paper, a one-on-one -on -one conflict between a wizard and a thing in a maze sounds like it would be really boring and not very interesting at all. And it may not be very interesting to watch, and if that's the case, I apologise, but... The actual gameplay of this is surprisingly compelling. It's because there's this, there's this real sense of actually hunting down the enemy. Determining where they are based on that sound. Luring them into a suitable position to attack them. Trying to take cover so they can't repeatedly blast you. And getting off the odd shot so you can just stun them. See, he's now getting perilously close to the flame, so I, ideally I want to lure him away. But I've taken so much damage now, I'm moving really slowly. Oh, but you know what else that auto aim feature means? It means that you can move in one direction and fire in another. Outstanding. Ah, oh, dead. All right, I'm enjoying this. Let's play again. Right, yeah, there's a lot of interesting tactical stuff going on in this. With a sort of quick recharge from when you're near the flame. But if you're near the flame, you also put yourself at risk of the imp capturing it. Run, 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 run. The only thing it could have maybe done with to make things a little bit more interesting is perhaps randomise the maze. So, I mean, as it stands, there's some interesting... You do get some variation from the different directions the imp comes from and your positioning and taking cover and all that sort of thing. But I just think some, some randomised mazes would have been cool. Maybe that's something that Crawford would have done if he made a 4K version. Or maybe he could have even done something like a maze editor. It, it, it wasn't unheard of for even Atari 2600 games to have level editors. I mean, yes, you, you couldn't save your work. But you could at least take the time to draw a crudely drawn penis on the screen and fight over it <laughs> which is obviously particularly appealing in two player modes all 
Oh, uh, get away from me. Stop that. Stop it. Yeah, well, I really like this game. Like I say, I, I've, I've not really given this any time or attention before just because I thought it looked so primitive and so simple that I thought, well, what really is the point? But as with so many other things in this compilation, there's so much value to be had here if you're going with a bit more of an open mind and sort of a, a willingness to analyse what these games are actually doing. And how some of them are actually actually really remarkable pieces of work for the time period. So yeah, this is a very different sort of experience from your average kind of arcade style game that you might play on the 2600, but it's very, very interesting. I think I think we got him. <laughs> I love the way he sort of withers when he dies. That's great. All right, you're down there. Oh, you're moving more quickly now as well. I don't like this. Stop that. Stop it. Oh no, you're taking my flame. You shit. Now what do I do? How do I get that back? I I can't help. Oh god, that does make it much harder. All right, let's turn that off again for now. We'll have another go without the without having to worry about the flame. Is there a way of randomizing the flame position? If I power off, no, it just seems. Oh no, when you game reset, it seems to pick one of several different places for the flame to be. Okay, fair enough. There's a touch of sort of dark cavern vibes to this as well. That sort of very early sense of survival horror in that you got very limited resources and you're relatively fragile. I mean, you're not that fragile in this because you do have like 100 points of damage. You can take 50 hits before you can, before you actually die. really want to lure him over here so we're a bit quicker to recharge the line of sight feature makes this really interesting as well you can actually sort of blind fire Nice. Next, please. You're up there this time. I see you. And nimble dodging out the way. Lovely stuff. Oh, I took some damage there. Nice. That was easy. Next, please. Where are you this time? Oh, there you are. Hello. Come on down. I'm guessing the faster speed also means he recovers from being stunned more quickly as well. Yeah, it certainly looks that way.
We got him. We got him. There we go. And the next. Where are you now? Over there. Hello. Yeah, as this gets harder, there's much more of an emphasis on having to move around and avoid him. And if you're playing with the in the mode where he can steal the flame, that is critically important because if you allow him to move through the flame, then you absolutely screw yourself. I mean, I, I guess it's not impossible to win if you let that happen, but you do make it much more difficult for yourself. Alright, we got him. Nice. And the next. Over this way. Oh, you're coming quite quick this time. Don't like this. Oh. I feel at a distinct disadvantage. Move and fire and move and fire and move and fire. It's alright, it's under control. It's all under control. Time to sneak around this way. <laughs> He'll never find me. Oh, we got him. We got him. Another one down. Yeah, this is going jolly well, isn't it? Where are you this time, little imp? Oh, oh, there you are. Hello. You're going very quickly and I don't like it. I also do, ow, I also do not like that angle you're approaching from. Oh, stop, please. Ow. My legs, they are broken. Might have to get into a, a bit more of a tactical shootout sort of situation with this guy because he's quick. And I've taken a lot of damage. And yeah, he does recharge quicker than I do. What's the point of those corridors when you can't go through them? I guess you could shoot through them. Oh no, 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 it's all over. It's all over. Huh. You know what, I really like that. I was not expecting to like that at all. But I really do. I really, really like that. And uh, I would love to try it in two-player sometime. So I will have to try and recruit someone to give that a go because I bet that's I bet that's really interesting two player with one player being invisible and having to keep track of where they are on the screen. Yeah, good stuff. Good job, Chris Crawford. Like I say, I would expect nothing less from Chris Crawford uh, given what I know of him, particularly in the Atari Eight Bit scene. But uh, yeah, th th this was a, a real pleasure to explore. And it's, uh, it's a shame that people didn't get to enjoy it back in the day because I think a lot of people would have had a lot of fun with that. Anyway, let's leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.
Thank you.